Hi, I'm Adam Hanlon. Welcome to Epixel Live. I'd like to introduce my fellow presenter, um, Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi. Nice to be here, Adam. Yeah, nice to see you. Um, so today um, we're going to discuss one of the topics that's recently been posted on the WebPixel forums um, by um, Interceptor121. Um, and here is the topic here. And the title of the topic is Dig Digital Camera Stagnation, Good or Bad? And the idea here is that um, Interceptor 121 is suggesting that in general, the cameras that are currently being produced by the camera manufacturers have the features that they're adding to them have not much relevance to us as underwater photographers. So it's quite an active thread on the forum. So as we go through, I'll probably um, read some of the some of the, the parts out. But I know, for example, Alex, you're, you're a Nikon shooter, but you've also shot with, with mirrorless um, cameras as well. What, what sort of features do you think they are producing that may be useful? Or do you think that, that uh, Incept 121 is right and, and that they are producing um, um, features that aren't particularly useful to us? I, I do think that it's a Massimo's thread is a really interesting one in that it is true, you know, that I think the technology is, feels very mature now. I think actually WetPixel was founded in an age when the technology was completely immature. And we were, you know, I think if you told us any of what we have now, we'd have just all been bowled over back in the early 2000s. But I, I do think the technology has become mature now. And it actually makes that justification for upgrading your camera all the time something that becomes less and less relevant. And I think that's something that underwater photographers are going to have to get used to because I think a lot of, you know, keen people have, have got used to the fact that actually they're buying these cameras for two to four years and you know people change them even more regularly than that and you know who are doing it a lot or who, who are really enjoying it and actually that maybe now you're buying cameras for a much longer stay mm -hmm. and you know part of the fun of underwater photography is having new gear and that's something we maybe will be less and less easy to justify because the cameras we currently have are so good and the incremental improvements in image quality and autofocus and all those, those things that we really like are going to become less and less. Yeah. I do think there's more room for expansion in, in mirrorless. Um, and by mirrorless, I'm not just talking about Mark Four Thirds. You know, both Canon and Nikon now are putting loads of money into their mirrorless cameras. Sony have got great, you know, you know high-end mirrorless cameras as well. And I think those three areas are, I think, are, are real growth areas. And I think there is probably more technology barriers that will come tumbling down there that'll make upgrades in that area feel more more likely, more more um, justifiable. I think we've, we've also got to put this against the light of the fact, and, and, and David D.B. mentions this in terms of sales figures. Um, he's quoted the Canon sales figures here. And, you know, imaging systems, their operating profit, I'm just looking on his post as we speak, have gone down 80.6%. So Canon's camera division has lost 80.6% of its operating profit. Um, and this is um, for... for um, comparing 2020 to 2019. Obviously, there are other factors at play here, um, but there's no doubt that the camera manufacturers themselves are having been financially squeezed. Um, well, and, um, and, and the big squeeze are these things, aren't they? You know, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I take, you know, me and my wife, we take, you know, hundreds and hundreds of photos of our daughter every year. I have, I don't know how many cameras I have. I never take a picture of her with a camera. I always take it with a phone. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know it's you know, and I think you know that's a reflection of the market now. People are are using phones more and more, and cameras have become a much more of a specialist tool. Yeah, and I think you know we're seeing we're seeing the um, the 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 market itself is shrinking. And although I I kind of support the idea that that's going to reduce. Um, development to some extent I think it may provoke development and the reason for that is that in order for them to sustain sales they need to actually produce new models otherwise otherwise they would they would lose the sales um, and that's that's, I think that's and really their important. certainly spiked around that I have to say though one thing that I have generally always only owned one camera body for my shooting but actually I've got two d850s now because I really feel that that's a camera for me for, for the long term. Yeah, And I think that might be a little bit of a change than that we see in, in, in how underwater films operate, in that they, they buy cameras and, you know, it was often the case, okay, if you had, you know, plenty of, of, of spare money, you'd, you'd buy two cameras because it was a sensible thing to do. But actually I can see now photographers getting to the point where they're almost wearing a camera out and rather than, you know, that's the upgrade time, they actually go out and buy another camera exactly the same because the system is so good. 
and the housings are going to end up being used for much, much longer. And it's, it's bad news for the housing manufacturers because obviously they make their money by selling new housings. And, and it, I mean, it's a bit like almost as part back to the film days, you know, where you bought a film camera and <laughs> kept it forever. It never wore out. Um, the technology yeah. didn't change very much. Um, I, I, I think um, obviously that we've recently or yesterday had the announcement that um, Olympus are selling their camera business. Um, mm. and, and possibly one of the bits that got slightly buried in, in, in the, the announcement is the company they've sold to are not really a company that particularly um, specializes in um, in in um, keeping other companies afloat. They tend to be more involved in stripping assets. So, oh, um, okay. I, I don't know any of this. So yeah, really so, so they, they, the company took on the, the Sony Vio computer business um, and, um, and certainly now, I mean, try and find a Vio computer. You, that doesn't exist. Um, so, you know, it's not altogether good news, this. It's, you know, th- th- there is quite a lot of, obviously, the, the, the deals have been announced um, and, and it could change between now and the end of the year when it's all supposed to be finalised. But, you know, this could potentially be the first of the, the major camera manufacturers to actually stop producing cameras. Uh, it'd be a great sadness. I think my, one of my first SLRs was, was an Olympus. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult time in the market. Yeah, I shoot with the current Olympus now. I do think, though, we will go get in the next, you know, literally weeks, we will get some exciting cameras this summer, simply mm. because Olympic year is always a time when the camera companies pull out their stops and introduce new cameras, new lenses, particularly at the high end of the market. And then that technology trickles back down through the cameras. Yeah. And particularly this year, because the Olympics were due to be in Japan, and that's the country yeah. that all the camera manufacturers come from, you know that they were all going to try their hardest to make something really special this summer. So I can see us getting a lot of really exciting, obviously we've already got 1DX Mark III and things like that, but I can see some more exciting announcements coming. I know the rumour mills are full of it, but I think although the Olympics aren't, aren't happening, the production runs of these cameras would have been signed off a long time ago. The yeah. development would have been done. And yeah. I, they'll still appear this summer as a result. They're not going to hold them till maybe when the Olympics can be held next year. So I think we'll see in the second half of this summer a lot of interesting camera technology coming onto the market. And then the trickle-down cameras as that technology is passed down through the range. So, But it, it will be interesting to see how big a step forward it is because I'm in Nikon you know, talks about their D6. I'm not going to get a D6. I'm very happy shooting the D850. Um, if the D850 is replaced by, say, a D860, yeah. I'll look very carefully about about that and, and look at about it. Obviously, if it fitted straight in my housing, I would I would probably jump on it straight away. But I, I um, think I think we've got to be very very wary as well about you know whenever we draw a line under camera technology and say that's it, they've done all they can do, and you know the the old argument that resolution was dead. You know we didn't need more resolution. We've got enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the D800 arrived, and and okay, you know the D800, D810 possibly weren't the best cameras in the world but they certainly were groundbreaking cameras they and, were they changed, they were and they changed the way that we looked at digital imaging and and obviously now the iteration of the 850 which is an amazing camera um so i think we've got to be very wary about looking at cameras and saying well you know we've reached some kind of plateau and whatever we do from now on out won't make a difference whenever that whenever i say that <laughs> yeah no, <laughs> almost immediately something comes out that blows my socks off so well, and that's what the camera company engineers and marketing teams are all working towards. They want us to want that next camera. So, Absolutely. you know, however logical we are before it appears, when it comes <laughs> out, we, we definitely, they, they make us want it, want it. I think that would be a really good topic for a future one of these, actually, is to discuss the gear we both currently use and why we've chosen to use it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was an interesting topic. I was about to tell you why I like the D850, but I think that'd be <laughs> another yeah topic for another time. Um, anyway, that's been great, Alex. Thanks very much. Um, and um, where? So obviously, um, you've been shooting a lot with D850. So where can people see pictures your your D850 images to see what you get up to with it? Well, actually, um, my website, which is amustard.com, is a really good place for that because on my website, I have a searchable database of my images. It's a curated collection, so it's only, I think it's 7,500 pictures now. But that database, you can actually search it on camera data. So if you're interested in pictures from a D850, if you type D850 into the search thing, all the D850 pictures come up. If you type D5, all the D5 pictures come up, but also any D500 pictures come up because it's ah. it's search term <laughs> D5 is within D500. So, yeah. um, but you know, you'll figure it, it, it's pretty good actually. I really like using it for lenses actually. 
Yeah. Um, if I'm interested in, in, if people are interested in saying, ask me about a lens, I often say, oh, just type in the focal length of the lens and you'll, you'll see all the pictures I've taken with it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's good advice. Um, so um, I'll say goodbye to you, Alex. And I'd like to say thanks to our sponsors for this episode, which was um, XIT404. We thank them very much for being a sponsor. Um, and just to remind everyone that they please, if you're enjoying this content, please subscribe to our channel, to the WetPixel Live channel, um, but also to add any comments. Um, if you've got suggestions for future topics you'd like us to cover, please add them down in the comment section. We'll do our best to come back to. And of course, like it if you enjoyed this. Thanks very much. <laughs>